Hello and welcome to The Journal, I'm Steve Kendall. The documentary Trailblazing Women in Ohio Politics illuminates the experiences and challenges of women who broke electoral barriers on both sides of the aisle. Uh, we're joined by the executive producer and director, Dr. Melissa K. Miller of the Bowling Green Department of Political Science. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us on Journal again. Thanks for having me, yeah, Steve. And, and the, you know, the title pretty much says it all, but uh, talk about where the idea came from, why you thought this was a, a documentary that needed to be made about women who really were, you know, cut a new swath across Ohio politics in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and, and to this day. It's a great origin story mm -hmm. for these trailblazers. Um, it actually was an idea that one of our Bowling Green State University alums had. Ah, okay. um, it, our former president of the university, Mary Ellen Maisie, was at an event and an alumni, an alumnus approached mm -hmm. her and said, you know, there are these women who have broken electoral barriers, the mm -hmm. first woman speaker of the house, the only woman to ever take the oath of office of governor. Wouldn't it be mm -hmm. great if there was a project to mm -hmm. honor ah. them? Mm -hmm. So the president of the university contacted the provost, who sent me an email, which caused a slight panic when you get an email from the provost, <laughs> provost please call me right away, mm -hmm. right. Uh, and said, do some brainstorming. If you'd mm -hmm. be interested in doing a project on women like this, mm -hmm. let us know. Uh -huh. We'll talk to this. this there may be mm -hmm. a donor here. And long story short, I got to thinking, I really love the mission of Bowling Green State University, a mm -hmm. public university for the public good. I really love to break down mm -hmm. politics. I do it in the media. I've done sure. it here sure. on the journal many mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And I thought these stories, I, I knew, not yet having talked to the women, that the stories would be compelling uh, and inspirational. Mm -hmm. So I approached WBGU. I was thrilled mm -hmm. when Tina Simon said, yeah, let's do this. Uh. And then we started fundraising. Dr. Mary Beth S. and Martin E. Ray, mm -hmm. that's the alumnus, ah, okay. she gave the seed money. And then we applied for grants and won grants from the Ohio History Fund and Ohio Humanities. So that's the origin story. Mm -hmm. And it just gets better because the stories mm -hmm. were indeed fascinating that we caught on camera. Yeah, now once you were at that part, how did you decide who to, who to try to find and, and talk to? Because obviously, uh, you know, some of these women are, you know, a little bit older now than they were when they were in office, that kind of thing. Um, was it difficult finding them to begin with? How, how did you go about doing that? Yes, I hadn't really thought this through, which is kind of funny <laughs> in retrospect. But in some cases, it took weeks to uh, get mm -hmm. through. I mean, one of the trailblazers, former U.S. Treasurer Mary Ellen Withrow, mm -hmm. Um, who lives in Marion, mm -hmm. and I, I couldn't figure out how to reach her. Ah. And so I reached out to her daughter on Facebook. So mm -hmm. I felt a little bit like I did a lot of sleuthing, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And um, so often then I called a local history museum oh, down okay. in Athens County mm -hmm. to find out and get contact information for first woman Lieutenant Governor Nancy Hollister. Right. Um, and so it was like, I just, in some cases, I called the League of Women Voters. Mm -hmm. Does anyone know someone who knows someone? Exactly. Who, mm, ah. And so that's, um, it took a lot longer to recruit and just find each of these sure. uh, trailblazers. Mm -hmm. And then I, with help from and su amazing support from the Center for Undergraduate Research and Scholarship, I was able to have students working over the summer, two summers in a row, mm -hmm. with funding from yeah. that mm -hmm. center. These undergraduates mm -hmm. did research on all these trailblazers, and it wasn't easy, Steve. Sure. Mm -hmm. If we had been researching Nancy Pelosi or Hillary Clinton, oh, yeah, there's be just tons a wealth, of tons of, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. These women, and we were especially interested in how their career started. Sometimes mm -hmm. they started Mary Ellen Withrow, who became mm -hmm. U.S. Treasurer, her breakthrough was she was the first woman elected to the Elgin Local School Board, Board of Education. Sure. Yep. And we found, my students, I should say, found that. were able to mm -hmm. find that coverage. We had amazing support also from Vera Lux at the BGSU Library. Mm -hmm. She was our research librarian and really helped us figure out how to get into all these small town newspapers. And mm -hmm. what viewers will see okay. is that the film and Megan Murray, Caitlin Cook-Finkler, um, our mm -hmm. editor and producer did just a beautiful job adding 
visual imagery. Right. A lot of it is these original newspaper coverage. Mm -hmm. You see yeah. these women in beehive mm -hmm. hairdos in yes. the late 1960s. Yeah. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and one of the things if, when you when you see this, and it's you've been, been premiering it around around the area, as you said, um, and we'll have it on our air on March 23rd. Um, you've, it's interesting to see the settings and the backgrounds as as women are. You're, you're talking with these women, and and the period pieces you're talking about, newspaper articles, photos, things like that, uh, that give you a view of that time, which now is history, but uh, they, they faced a lot of interesting challenges because uh, while there had been women in office before to some degree, it was pretty limited. And a lot of these women had families and things like that. And there was a question that would come up. It's like, well, while you're doing this, who's going to take care of the family? Which they wouldn't ask a man that necessarily. But in that era, they were asking women that when they said, well, I'd like to be on the school board. I'd like to do this. I'd like to do whatever. So uh, when talking with them, how did they describe those kind of challenges where people ask them, well, what do you mean you want to run for office? What's that about? So <clears throat> the women employed different strategies, okay. and so it was unique to each individual candidate. Some of them mm -hmm. didn't have children, but mm -hmm. those sure. who did almost to the letter said that they got that kind of question. Ah, mm -hmm. um, Nancy Hollister, who I mentioned, she was the first woman lieutenant governor. Right. And she said, she seemed to, whenever there was a criticism or a thinly veiled criticism mm -hmm. or pushback, she used humor. Ah, okay. She <clears throat> used humor. And that worked really effectively for her. Mm -hmm. We have another trailblazer, the first African-American woman in the Ohio legislature. Mm -hmm. She was initially appointed to the Ohio House of Representatives because her husband had right. served for seven years. He died in office. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she told us, and viewers will hear her story in the film, that she needed to take the job to mm -hmm. support her three children. Ah, she okay. had a job at the library, and mm -hmm. she said that wasn't going to help me raise the three children. So, so she was elected. There was pushback and controversy. Sure. In her own words, she explains there was pushback, there was controversy, there were others, mm -hmm. this is in the Cincinnati area, right. that felt that they would have been better qualified, and mm -hmm. yet she was elected yeah. and then re-elected and won a total of eight elections ah, until she so. retired, never mm -hmm. lost an election. Yeah. yeah, well we come back, I know there's, there's uh, maybe we're talking about the same person, I remember the one that, one of the women said, and I'm not sure if she was replacing her father maybe in that kind of a situation, and she said, uh, at first she's like, I don't know if I, I mean, you're asking me to replace him. They came to her and said, would you like to, you know, uh, be appointed? And she's like, I'm not sure. I mean, if her first thing was, I'm not sure I'm up to this. But then turns out she was. Uh, we'll talk about her a little bit too. Back in just a moment, it's Trailblazing Women in Ohio Politics uh, with the executive producer and director, uh, Dr. Melissa K. Miller. Back in just a moment. Thank you for staying with us here on The Journal. We're talking with Dr. Melissa K. Miller, who is the executive director, excuse me, executive producer and director of Trailblazing Women in Ohio Politics, a documentary uh, which you'll be able to watch on WBGU-PBS on March 23rd. Uh, and it, we were talking about some of the stories in general, but one of the things when we watched the preview of this, and we watched it a week or so ago, uh, was just how much we didn't know about the stories these women's had to tell because you're looking as you said people that one of them served as governor for a short time and others elect uh, uh, a lieutenant governor uh tr secretary of the treasury for the united states of america that kind of thing but their stories besides what they did in office and they were all very successful at what they did uh, there was a lot of stories of how they got into this and you you were talking about one before uh, but then there was the woman who had to replace her father and he was an iconic giant of in the legislature and uh, that had to be pretty that'd be intimidating for anybody to do uh, but especially a woman in that situation because it just wasn't that usual to see women in the Ohio legislature or any area of politics at that point. Not only that she was African-American mm -hmm. and yes. she was only the third African-American in the ah. Ohio legislature. Mm -hmm. um, her father C.J. McClinn Jr. had mm -hmm. served in the Ohio House for 22 years and oh, was considered wow. a real force in mm -hmm. the Ohio House and he had been one of the founders of the equivalent of the Congressional Black Caucus mm -hmm. but at the Ohio State Legislature. Mm -hmm. And she had been running the family business which was a funeral home right. business. Mm -hmm. And 
what happened was he had been diagnosed with cancer. Ah. And so he had time to talk to the speaker about oh, who ought okay. to, you know, who mm -hmm. should be the one to replace him. And he chose Ryan McLinn, his, his, his daughter. Mm. And she was, I, I think a little bit of intimidation mm -hmm. comes across. At the same time, sure. she said, I was a people person. I was just going to say that, yeah. And she mentions that, that that was one of her roles at the running the funeral home business was she met everybody. She knew how to talk with people. She knew how to read people. Yeah. And that that's right. And also mm -hmm. she'd been very active in high school. She'd always mm -hmm. been a people person, loads of energy, um, went mm -hmm. to college on a full scholarship for cheerleading, right. which is just mm -hmm. <laughs> one of those wonderful details. Yes. If viewers mm -hmm. think that to get into politics, boy, you've got to be, you know, from birth, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. delivering speeches and, yeah. and being on your debate team in your high school and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Each yeah. of these women came from different paths and different backgrounds. Uh, Betty Montgomery, here mm -hmm. from Northwest Ohio, yeah. um, she was an English major at Bowling Green State University. Right. She went on to get her law degree and really wanted to be a prosecutor, but mm. she couldn't get hired. I remember, yeah, the story is interesting there because they were talking about she wanted to be a clerk to an existing prosecutor, and there were no women county prosecutors in the state None. period, and it wasn't even thought to be almost like allowed sort of. That's correct. Way, in that in that era, and yeah. so in that era, which was the mm -hmm. early 1970s. Mm -hmm. You could only be hired as a clerk for a judge if the judge was a woman. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there was only one woman right. judge in Lucas County who didn't have any openings. Ah. So she originally, her, she did end up getting hired mm -hmm. to be a secretary right. for a sitting male mm -hmm. judge. And within two weeks, she was promoted mm -hmm. to criminal clerk. Yeah. And I remember she made a comment. It said something like that her, her family, her father had said to her, you know, something in effect of the side door is still a door in, and that's how she looked at that secretary job. I'll get in, and then I'll show them, and obviously she did. Yes, and that's yeah. advice that she and other women mm -hmm. in in the project give to women today, ah, mm -hmm. which is look for those opportunities right. um, and take risks. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the most impressive things, and the reason this period mm -hmm. that we're looking at in the film is so interesting isn't because they were the very first woman ever to be elected to anything in sure. Ohio. No, that was yeah. many years prior. Mm -hmm. yeah. But during the late 1960s, 1970s, mm -hmm. and 1980s, women actually began to run for office in greater number. Right. And so mm -hmm. that's when you start to see this uptick that is historically significant. And mm -hmm. they're all part of it. And they're all, they really do tell inspirational stories of overcoming obstacles and barriers and mm -hmm. pushback. Yeah and naysayers. <laughs> yeah. And one of them was when you were talking about uh, Betty Montgomery was the fact that, yeah, you had to, if you were going to be a clerk, you had to be of the same gender as a judge. Well, the fact remained, there weren't a lot of women judges, which made it difficult to become a clerk because there just weren't women waiting to appoint you to be their clerk. So it, it speaks to the fact that, yeah, that expanded then, as you said, in the 70s, 80s, the opportunities became a little more prevalent because women like Betty Montgomery and all the people we're talking about opened those doors and made it the norm to be whatever they were, whatever office they were holding or whatever, whatever thing they'd been appointed to. And, and the kinds of pushback they got, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. interesting. So Joanne Davidson mm -hmm. became the first woman Speaker of the Ohio House. Right. And when somebody, and how did that come about? Well, she'd worked in the party. She'd been on the Reynoldsburg City Council mm -hmm. outside of Columbus. And somebody dropped off the ballot. Right. And she'd been so active in the party, and she couldn't get the party to endorse to, to her. Even, yeah, take her seriously for right. it. Right. And so she looked into all the party rules and did a little homework, as she yeah. says, and figured <laughs> out that the rules were such mm -hmm. that this smaller group got to decide who would be put on the ballot, and it was all people within her area. And, and so she kind of did this, I wouldn't say an end run, it yeah. was totally <laughs> legit, yeah. but she had to figure out how to get yeah. on the ballot when her party was initially resistant. She goes mm -hmm. on to become the first woman speaker of the yeah. Ohio House. Yeah.
you know, it, it speaks to the fact that, yes, you said they, you know, you have to sort of challenge and find and, and uh, look for those opportunities, and when you find them, run with them, and that's exactly what she did. But yeah, it was interesting because they, they were not taking her serious all as a candidate and says, aha, but look what I found here. You have to take me seriously. That's and right. the next thing you know, you said she's the Speaker of the House. Although being Speaker of the House right now in Ohio might not be the most enjoyable experience. but Things were then, different they, back then. <laughs> things were a little different back then. Excuse me. Now, when, you, when, you look, when you're talking with these people, and obviously uh, you couldn't get to everybody probably you wanted to have in the program. It's obviously a documentary, so the length that it is. And uh, was there anything when you were talking with women, with these women, that surprised you about what they said about their experience and anything that was like, oh, I didn't ever think they would have this story to tell me? So, truth be told, <laughs> okay, all right. I think it's good to be honest <laughs> with viewers. Let's, let's try that, yeah, okay. So, I have been a scholar mm -hmm. of gender and politics for a number of years. I came to BDSU in 2005. Mm -hmm. I teach women in American politics. Mm -hmm. And this whole area of research is what I study ah, and just love. Okay. And what I knew going into it was that there was a whole body of research that scholars have mm -hmm. done, but it's typically been these like large surveys of men and women candidates, uh -huh. large surveys of women and men who've held public office. Uh -huh. And what that research showed were really kind of consistent findings over those years that were parties don't tend to recruit women, men tend to get recruited to run far mm. more often than women, women tend to be tend to be ignored in the press, particularly mm. in the you know, 60s, 70s, sure. 80s. If mm. they got mentioned at all, it would yeah. be about their clothing, right. right? So what I knew was this academic body of research with these really fascinating findings, mm -hmm that uh, only other academics would read. And that's uh, why uh, okay. with this opportunity to partner with WBDU, mm -hmm. to work with Caitlin Cook Finkler, the producer, Megan Murray, the editor, and really actually talk to these women, not do a survey, but let mm -hmm. them tell their stories. Yeah. It was just such an amazing opportunity. Mm -hmm. And we're really bringing their stories to life for viewers. Yeah. Oh, we come back, let's talk a little bit more about that because it is, it's, it's their, in their words what, what they experienced and, and what they accomplished. So back in just a moment, we're talking about trailblazing women in Ohio politics here on The Journal. Back in a moment. Thank you for staying with us here on The Journal. Our guest is Dr. Melissa K. Miller, and we're talking about trailblazing women in Ohio politics. And uh, one of the things when we that last segment we talked about was there's lots of statistics, there's lots of uh, uh, grandiose research projects that talk about gender and politics, but what you were able to do was kind of drill down to the actual stories, the actual, in their own words, what it was like, not just numbers or I was elected for this many years and that was above the average for a woman in the Ohio legislature. That's like, these are their actual little narratives of what it was like from the day they decided to either run for an elective office or got appointed to one and what, what it was like to have to deal with that and, and be sort of always the sort of odd person out no matter where you were in the legislature or in the administrative offices of Ohio government. That's right. A number of our trailblazers were the only woman. Mm -hmm. And so Helen Rankin was the first African-American woman in the mm -hmm. Ohio House and Senate combined. Wow. She was the first. Mm -hmm. Mary Ellen Withrow, when she ran for state treasurer, was the only woman on the ballot. Wow. She was also mm -hmm. the only woman on the ballot about 10, 12 years prior when she ran for her local board of education. Yeah. and. She used an interesting strategy. She, she went from the local board of education to Marion County treasurer to state treasurer to U.S. treasurer. Wow. The only yeah. person mm -hmm. in the history of the United States who served as treasurer at all three levels of government. Ah. Um, but she tells a, a great mm -hmm. story in the film um, where she went to a union asking for the union's support and they weren't going to support mm -hmm. her. And she said, how many of your union are women? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And the, the gentleman who led like, the union said 54%. Oh. And yeah. she said, well, how are they gonna feel if you don't support the only woman on the ticket? Yeah. So she yeah. used a strategy of really embracing and emphasizing that she mm -hmm. was the only woman and it worked for her. Right. 
It doesn't mean that all of the trailblazers mm -hmm. use that strategy. As I said, mm -hmm. Nancy Hollister on the other side of the aisle. So we have a, you know Democrats and Republicans here. Nancy Hollister used humor. There's such a variety of experience. Right. And, and one thing that I'll, I'll add mm -hmm. um, is that important uh, aspect of this film is that it's women from both sides of the aisle. Sure. And right. one of the things that surprised us as mm -hmm. we were doing the WBGU, our producer, Caitlin, um, as, as we were going and interviewing the women, these threads mm -hmm. that kept coming up, it didn't matter whether we were talking to a Republican or a mm -hmm. Democrat, but there'd be these threads uh, mm -hmm. of pushback. Um, people people think, saying, I don't think you can win. Yeah, and, which, and just saying yeah, it openly yeah, directly to without any yeah right any concern at all about just yeah in your face like well, I don't think you'd win so why are you even trying that's yeah. right yeah. and yeah. Um, another <laughs> thing I'll say is that the project one of the the nice aspects of the project is that on the website for the project mm -hmm. uh, www.bgsu.edu/trailblazers yeah. yep. um, there's more content there. Sure. So you mm -hmm. can hear more sound bites and get more mm -hmm. insights than what we could put into the film. And, and it, you know, the fact that we were able to do that just speaks to the very rich mm -hmm. interviews that we had with these women, right. which will be housed in their entirety mm -hmm. in BGSU's Center for Archival Collections oh. later this year. Yeah. So there's so many ways the public can interact mm -hmm. with these fascinating women. And I just want to share one other mm -hmm. story. Sure. This is from our other Northwest Ohio trailblazer. In addition to Betty Montgomery, we mm -hmm. have Marcy Kaptur, the yeah, longest absolutely. serving mm -hmm. woman in the U.S. House of right. Representatives. And when she first ran mm -hmm. uh, in 1982, uh, she was, uh, this is just a fun <laughs> fact, a quirky mm -hmm. fact, she was starting her Ph.D. at MIT. Right. And yes. she was recruited to come back to Lucas County and run for Congress. And she had the idea um, that the campaign would have a bake sale. Yeah. The, well, there's yeah, and there's there's some there are inter we won't spoil it, but there are interesting comments that's made when she begins to bring her donations in. Yes. And the the, the local Democratic Party's like, uh, we don't we've never dealt in this kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, and it wasn't because it was huge amounts. It came in in trickles, and they were like, "Well, we don't know what to do with this." That's right. Because it was so, a different kind of campaign. That's right. Yeah. These women ran different mm. kinds of campaigns. Yes. Whether it was mm. holding a bake sale, right. um, while this didn't quite make it into the film, it's yeah. something that you can learn um, on the website. Mary Ellen Withrow, who ran mm -hmm. for treasurer, she passed out recipes. Yes. And yeah, she I, was yeah. criticized by her uh, her male opponent. Mm. Said. You shouldn't, you're running for treasure. You shouldn't yeah, be this passing is out recipes. Yeah. And she yeah. said, people keep recipes. A, and of course, yeah. she went on to win. win. Sure. So, you know, in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, um, women were having to be creative. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and they didn't know whether it would work. Mm -hmm. And for these women, it did, yeah. which is really inspirational. Yeah, because I remember when the question came up when Marcy Kaptur was, was talking about this, and she said, I asked them how much it would cost to run for the House of Representatives. And they quoted her a figure, and she said, my whole family's never had that amount of money in their, commun or cumulatively in their entire lives, and you're telling me that's what it's going to cost. And she raised the money, but yeah, in different ways. It was just interesting to see uh, how they were actually surprising the, the, the party structure. Because Absolutely. the party structure had a certain idea of who should run, how it should be done, all that. And as you said, they broke these barriers like, well, I'm going to pass out recipes. And they probably went, are you crazy? Nobody that's cares. right. If, no, let alone her opponent, probably the people in her own party went, well, that's just not, not going, going to work. work. Not going to work. And yet she, had a, she, was out, she was smarter than they were. People save. They hold on to recipes. That's right. And they'll remember that's my right. name. That's and right. Yeah, yeah. The, I, the stories, um, the challenges, mm -hmm. the strategies they used, I think also the fact that these women come from all different walks of life. Right. Mm -hmm. Some, like Marcy Kaptur, from very humble backgrounds. Right. Mm -hmm. 
We have African-American women. Helen Rankin was born and raised in Alabama, but moved to Ohio because there weren't opportunities for black women mm -hmm. in sure. Alabama. We have just such a range. Mary Ellen Withrow grew up on a farm. Joanne Davidson mm -hmm. actually grew up in Atlanta mm -hmm. and was yeah. schooled in the South, where I remember asking her about that in the interview. Tell me, were you interested in you know history or those kinds of subjects? And she said, in the, when I went to school in the South, they were mostly interested in teaching us good manners and right. etiquette. And, mm -hmm. and here she became, you know, mm -hmm. the most powerful person in the Ohio legislature right. as speaker. Well, mm -hmm. arguably there would have been a Senate president yeah. as well. But yeah. Oh, sure. And, and, and even with Betty Montgomery, she said, you know, the, the traditional, these were, these were non-traditional roles because women were, especially in the 50s, 60s, uh, basically pigeonholed into these are the careers that women do. And I remember she made a comment that, well, nothing wrong with all of those. I admire the people that do those, but that wasn't what I wanted to do. And that's what made her, again, one of the trailblazing people. Um, was there, is there, we've just got a moment here. Is there one thing, one, anything else that people should look for when they, when they watch and see with these women that's, that's consistent through all of them? I mean, you've talked about a number of things, but is there any one, one other thing that people should look for, one of the stories that they really don't want to miss when they're watching this? There is a, a fun fact okay. that most people don't know about Ohio. Okay. Well, there are two really, and one of them we have already mentioned. Okay, all right. And that has to do with Ohio having already had a woman governor. Okay, good. Yeah. but only for 11 days. Mm -hmm. right. So that is something to look for. There's another fun fact that distinguishes Ohio in the election of women of color, and it distinguishes Ohio as the first in all 50 states. Ah. And I won't give it away, okay. but right. that, is, have to a, watch to that is such an interesting mm. um, thing to know about the state of Ohio, that we led all 50 states in this one aspect of electing oh. women of color. The other thing is, in the film, look mm -hmm. for those nuggets of advice. Mm -hmm. whether, yes. whether you're a young girl or a man or a woman, yeah. these women really value public service. Mm -hmm. And they, are, they were in it to really serve their communities and serve the state. And they give some really good advice uh, for men and women, yeah. young mm -hmm. and old. Right. Yeah, great. Well, Dr. Melissa K. Miller, thank you so much. Uh, the documentary is Trailblazing Women in Ohio Politics. It will air on March 23rd, rather, here on WBGU-PBS. Uh, you can check us out at WBGU.org. And, of course, you can watch us every Thursday night at 8 o'clock here on WBGU-PBS. We will see you again next time. Good night and good luck.